Over on BBC Two at six o'clock this evening, Lorne Green is the starship commander who takes the survivors of a doomed planet off in search of a new home in Battlestar Galactica. It's a new year and that means new progs for 91 on CBBC. Partsworth and co join the gang as they do what they do down in the dream zone. Remember Billy Webb? Well, he's back with his amazing stories. A top new drama series about five children and it. Julian Parkin, the new ice spy spy master, he's in control. And get down with Gordon the Gopher in his own show. New progs for 91 on CBBC. And that is, of course, where you are right now. Good afternoon. <coughs> I yeah, get down. Get, get down and then get back up again, sort of. If you know what I'm saying, man. Yes, anyway, how are you? Hope you're feeling all right. It's Friday. The first Friday after Christmas, actually. It is, indeed. Now, Ed, you know what, me, what happens on the 6th of January, don't you? You do. Do you know what, actually? I just thought about it. It's the second Friday after Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> What do you mean, no, I didn't, they did. <laughs> Shush. Thank you, team. Yes, it's the second Friday. Anyway, yes, thank you. Shush. What I'm saying, man, is that the decorations are going to have to come down soon. Oh, yes, they do. Are you going to take them down? Well, AA, I know a man who can. <laughs> Jack and Nori's story. There's also Fantastic Max, a new series of Ice by Newsround and The Watch House. That's all coming up today. But if you look there, there's a C for Corners. today and uh, I don't want Simon and Sophie to find me all right but uh, you can come down if you like come on <laughs> hurry up cozy down here isn't it ah yeah can't be bothered to do much today so just watching a few of my old videos reliving some of my finest moments in fact oh yeah hey you'll love this bit of my recycling wrap what's this then why don't you recycle it what about them carrier bags you get from all the shops? There's paper ones and plastic ones. We use that lots and lots. But don't be hasty, what a waste. Why don't you hold your horses? Use the same again and again and save the world's resources. <laughs> Brilliant, eh? Ah, I am having such a lovely time. And Simon and Sophie will never find me down here. <laughs> Him down there, scoffing chocolates and watching himself on telly. <laughs> Joe! We know you're down there. Oh, no! <sighs> All right, you can come down oh, and have a little look show. around, but no messing with any of my stuff. And I say what we're going to watch on the video. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, I give up. Hey, Joe, this is great. Simon, look at this. This is brilliant. Hello. Oh, Hello. look at this, the Corn Flakes breakfast show. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was cool. Got to watch it. Simon! I don't want to watch that! I was watching... I was watching him... Um... Yes, yes Joe? Oh, I was watching me. Oh, this is far more interesting. We're the crispiest, we're the crunchiest, we're the maltiest, we're the munchiest. It's the Corn Flakes Breakfast Show. Good morning and welcome once again to that crazy crunchy breakfast show with all your regular favourites, the Tasty Toast Slices. Hey, oh, hey, oh, 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 Hello. Hello. Uh, 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 but, but no breakfast show will be complete without the star of our show, the Crunchable Complete. <laughs> <laughs> Always popular members of any breakfast. 
Now, we've had a letter today from uh, Melissa Harris, and she's written in to ask, who first made cornflakes and rice crispers? She also says, could you say hello to my friend Claire Dyhurst? <laughs> Ready, everyone? Hello, Claire! <laughs> now, the answer to your request to Melissa is Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Oh, Dr. Melissa! <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Kellogg had a nursing home in Michigan, USA, and he wanted to give his patients a good, nourishing breakfast, which was easy to digest instead of that heavy stuff which people used to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he tried this and that and came up with paper-thin, malt-flavored, toasted flakes of maize! <laughs> <laughs> and here they are singing their latest hit, the cornflakes! We're the crispiest, we're the crunchiest, we're the maltiest, we're the munchiest. It's a cornflakes breakfast show. Cornflakes are a breakfast craze, cause we're the hearts of golden lace. I'm ripened for a hundred days and more. We're milk and cooked with sugar and malt, then they add a pinch of salt for a flavor which you cannot fault. Cornflakes. Let's press us into flakes We're toasted crisp for 40 shakes And now you know just how they make Corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes Uh, Wicked. Brilliant. That was brilliant, wasn't it, Joe? Mm, yeah, quite nice. But um, I've got a brilliant video of me. Hey, Simon, here, do you remember so the last time we showed like... the Cornflakes Breakfast Show? We had loads of letters in about how we made the Cornflakes Sing and Dance. Don't yeah, they? Do you remember there. my yeah. little song and dance mm. number? Well, I tell you I've what, why here. don't so... I go upstairs and get the answer set up to that very question? So great idea. Yeah. I've got my best tape here. Ah, so Joe! You what have you there. still got these here for? <laughs> Look, these were a mystery corner object about two years ago. I thought they might come in useful, didn't I? Oh, look! Here's the video of that mystery object. Oh, I think it was about making pizza. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, do lit! Mm. They start off with some yeast. That's to make the dough light. And a bit of salt. Bring in the water. Uh, what else do you need for dough? Oh, that's right, flour. They're quite simple ingredients, but it's the, uh, it's the way you mix them that's important. There we are. And as they say in Franco's Pizzeria, Franco Avanti! Uh, right, now it really is time for my favourite video, Sophie! Uh, Sophie? That's charming, isn't it? Well, in that case, I'm off to have a little chocky. <laughs>
to hear. Joe sounds a bit annoyed about something, doesn't he? Never mind about him. Let's go on and answer this cornflakes question. OK. How did you make the cornflakes dance about and sing from Katie Smith? And I would like to know how the dancing cornflakes were created from Andrew Mossage. And here are more questions about the cornflakes from Nicholas Jones and Christina Hopewell. All right, I'll get on with it. Uh, there's a process that we use in television for trick photography. It's called colour separation overlay. Basically what happens is this. A TV camera, when controlled by a special electronic switch, will ignore anything that's coloured blue. So in the picture, anything that's blue completely disappears. It's a bit like having a photograph where you've cut part of it out. Now, if you have another photograph like that one, and you put it behind it, underneath it, then the family don't look like they're in the city anymore. They all look like they're in the country. Or at least the two chaps and chapesses do. And basically the same sort of thing happens with the camera. Two photographs, one on top of the other, and uh, everything that's blue in the top photograph is completely ignored, and you can see through to the one underneath. Well, in the Cornflex breakfast show, there were three cameras' pictures on top of each other, and this is the one that was on the bottom, the picture of the kitchen. And then a second camera was pointing at this table here. And because the table has a blue background, the camera ignores the blue in the way that Simon explained. And if you put the two pictures together, you get this. Oh, better get out of the way. And finally, the third camera takes a picture of the um, cornflakes themselves. Here they are. This is the actual size that they are. They're puppets, really, and they're uh, operated with these levers at the back. There. Now, the clever thing is that the puppeteers themselves wear a suit of blue, so they themselves completely disappear as well. Now, I'm just going to move back a little bit so the camera is as far away from me as possible. And watch this. And the eggs which hopped up and down. Why? Why? Ooh. And the toast slices. Hello. And the moving jug were also operated by puppeteers. Clever, eh? Very clever <laughs> stuff indeed. Now, in order for it to work properly, the lighting has to be just right, and the cameras and the puppeteers must work out very precise positions. This all takes a long time, and in fact, it took a whole day just to record that one song, which lasted about two and a half minutes. So now you know how it's all done, let's have another look at a bit of the Corners Breakfast Show. <laughs> Princess in the flakes, where toasted crisp or forty shakes. And now you know just how they mix. Corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes, corn flakes! Ah, back on my own again. And nothing's going to stop me watching my favourite film now. Uh, it's my answer to Kate John's and Manta Manubi's question about how they make rain, snow and wind in films. Start me, of course, with a little bit of help from Sophie and Steve. And uh, if anyone dares to disturb me this time, it'll be the worst for them, won't it? Ha! I'm singing in the rain. Just singing in the rain If I could be a film star I'd have fortune and fame I'd dance down the steps Like somebody in love The rain pouring down From the skies up the No, no, there ain't no rain at all it's, it's just a little trick that you use when making pictures. pictures. Sprinklers spray a water on the scene. The blood pulls up, it looks like rain. Go away! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> if I could be a film star, I'd be just like John Wayne. Wrist up like a boy, riding through the rain. Yeah. With the course of a trusty horse, I'd sing a sweet refrain. And the wind comes rushing down the plane. Out of you.